Hey, hello everybody, it's The Last Raider. We are back with another video, and uh, we're going to be getting on the Wonder Woman 84 stuff that's been going on. Um, they apparently released a variant cover. What you see here is one of the movie posters that's going to be coming out for Wonder Woman 84. And what we have seen with comic books over the last couple of years is this constant push for wokeism. And you're going to see a lot of wokeism here in a minute. <laughs> but with the with Wonder Woman 84, I think it's probably going to be a pretty good blockbuster. They're taking extra time. Any extra time you can take, take to polish up a movie usually is a good thing. It gives the producers and, and director a little more time you know, to, to review stuff. They're not so crunched for time, so to speak. And they can put out a superior product. Now, unfortunately... What we see here is DC decided to do a comic book tie-in. And there's there's not a problem with doing comic book tie-ins. They've been done very well, and they've been done very poorly. And DC, with their current cover, in my opinion, just missed the mark entirely. They could have found someone better. And I did actually find someone who actually produced a better... A woman actually produced a much better version but like I said, here you see Wonder Woman 84. And I want you to take a good look at the screen because this is what they're trying to do a tie-in comic for. All right? You're going to see it done wrong. And then you're going to see what I think is probably the perfect cover that would have done this to a far superior degree. Dad, damn it. More people on my phone. I swear to God. Anyway, as I said, right here you have the movie poster. Now here's what DC puts out as their variant cover. It's like, dear God, Wonder Bab should have stayed away from the cheesecake. Uh, this is apparently Rooster Teeth's variant cover that they've, they've put out. It's a, a variation. Uh, basically, when you put out a comic book, you have multiple covers sometimes. Uh, Marvel is really bad about doing this. They'll put seven, eight, almost 20 different covers for the same book, trying to get people to buy them just to collect all the covers. Uh whether you want to or not, that's that's totally up to you, but I, I'm not a cover collector. I don't see the point in buying a, the same story seven or eight, even 20 times. But they did this, and this was more of a body positivity nonsense that came out of it. Uh, you see here, you got Wonder Woman who has more has so much thunder on her thighs that you can't see her magic lasso behind her, if it's even there. Uh, looks like she should have the magic lasso used to hold up her pants. But, you know, we've got small bust size, morbidly overweight, practically fighting heart disease. Very unhealthy looking. Nothing compared to the Greek goddess look that you get out of Gal Gadot. By the way, Gal Gadot, for those who don't know, she's actually had Israeli military training. She's a supermodel. She's actually physically capable of fighting. So I actually have no problem with the actress whatsoever playing as Wonder Woman. In my opinion, they couldn't find someone more perfect because Wonder Woman has to be a warrior princess almost. And you kind of get that with Gal Gadot. She's probably more Xena than Lucy Lawless because Lucy Lawless, if you ever listen to any of her interviews, she always tells everyone she was not one of these rough and tumble kind of chicks. Uh, she ended up, they ended up asking her to do a lot of this stuff and she had to learn on the fly. Gal Gadot knows, you know, she has to, she can actually probably take a hit in a fight and keep going, which gives her a really good, she's got this natural toughness to her, despite looking like a dainty woman. She has a very decent toughness and it shows in her acting. So I, I actually like Gal Gadot as a, you know, as the actress of Wonder Woman. Politics aside, I don't know. I don't really care. But anyway. With well, this body positivity nonsense you got going on right here, uh, you don't see this thing jumping up there and saving the day. All right? <laughs> it's just, it's not one of those things you, you expect to happen. Uh, I don't know what else to say about this. It's a horrible cover. And uh, the thing about comic books, movie posters, the, the thing you got to remember is a lot of people say that it's the cover art that people see first. It's technically not. The first thing your mind actually catches visually is the shape of the book. Okay, I'm going to go off onto this subject very quickly because it kind of ties into the whole having a good-looking character and good-looking art. Mostly this is because the cover or the shape of a comic book, you know, the 
longer than it is wide, is similar to the same shape as credit cards, cell phones, television screens to an extent have this, uh, nautilus shells in nature, and the uh, patterns within sunflower seeds all fall within what is called the golden ratio. And the golden ratio is just simply a mathematical equation of visual perfection to an extent. Uh, it's something that because of the way the hum a human body is designed or the way we perceive things that are beautiful, this is just a mathematical equation showing us as to why. Uh, it's just the proportions are perfect in every way whatsoever. So you see the shape of the comic book. So you're, you're automatically being drawn to a comic book, a credit card, a cell phone, television set, because of the rough shape of it is already to the point of pleasing. That little rectangle that's designed as is very pleasing to the human eye. And you wish to, you know, you're attracted to that. Now imagine being attracted to the shape of someone and then turning around looking in their horse faced. Because that's what we're dealing with now. Because after seeing the shape of the book, you then go to the cover art. And then from the cover art, you then move up to the title. So you would have, this is going to be, you would see the shape of the book. This, let me get this right here, is going to be what you see next. Which is going to mess you up. Like nobody's business once you see that. And if you can get past this, then you will look to see what this is about or, or what the title of the book is. You got to remember, comic books are a visual medium. You're going to see visual things before you see anything else. So you see, you see, you have a problem here with this because, one, this is not an attractive Wonder Woman. Uh, a vast majority of comic book audience are young men. And they're not going, and men are attracted to women visually. That's what a lot of these third wave feminists understand, but they're active, but they're stupid in the fact that they actively try to fight this all the time. Instead of just, you know, accepting it. Oh, you know, men are, men are pleasing. We could create a feminist superhero that actually looks hot and demands respect. But then y'all have to reinvent Wonder Woman, which is what they're doing now and doing it poorly. So I got to look into the internet and as usual with very poor art, coming from professionals, or supposed professionals, uh, people showed up and began trying to show off, you know, better covers. They, they went up there and said, you know, I think I can do this better. There were a lot of decent entries, but I think what you could call the best one, and I actually found this, it comes from a different company. Now remember, this is the one, this is what you're trying to, dear God, Ethan, just calm down, okay, I'll get to your video later. This is the, what you're trying to implement right now, okay? This is what you're trying to get through to people, which is, you know, this is the movie. This is a tie-in to it. Uh, look at this book. You'll learn some things about the movie. You'll be ahead when you get in there. Some things won't be so gray. You won't have this foggy area of the movie. You'll know what's going on to some extent as it's revealed to you in the movie. So this is what you're going for. This is what DC has put out here, which is totally not anything like the movie. And this is the superior product, in my opinion. Here you have, you've got Wonder Woman, you've got a, not a completely accurate Gal Gadot, but you have a character on here, a, a woman who, you know, could be close to it. Uh, more probably Egyptian style in the face than anything else. But you have an athletic, capable Wonder Woman. Still has the stars in the hair and everything, but has the actual costume on the movie poster. And when you see this, this is infinitely more pleasing. It's more attractive. So you would see this coming in. When zoom in automatically go straight for the boobs. <laughs> anyway, uh, what can you do? You would see this, and then you would want to know what the comic book's title is. And that this works, in my opinion, much, much better than what DC put out. And mind you, this has come from Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth that is right now a failing company at the moment. I don't know why DC went to them for their comic art. Uh, they could have simply... was this? War Dance Comics? And I believe War Dance Comics actually called in... Uh, they actually said this was a woman who designed this. So this is actually far, far better than what we saw 
coming from rooster teeth. And this is from someone else who's independent who just did this for the fly. And I agree with them on the, I got this off bounding into comics and on there, they said, we think that they actually absolutely nailed it. And I, I cannot imagine getting this cover any more, any better than what it already is. Uh, like I said, you have wonder woman powerful with the lasso. I mean, this looks like the cover. This looks like the movie poster. You've got the same outfit. There's no way in heck you cannot mistake this for any other book. And it it automatically lets you know, hey, this is probably a movie tie-in. This may answer some questions. There's probably some things in the movie you probably need to know ahead of time before going in. There may be a backstory. Like With this, you, you think, well, there may be a backstory or something that I need to know about. Maybe this explains Maxwell Lord. Maybe maybe we don't see what all has happened so far. It is a tie-in comic. So, yeah, I think this is probably the superior Wonder Woman cover. Wonder Woman 1984 cover. Um, I don't know why DC did not call to fans. They apparently did not call to a fan about this. Uh, they went to someone else who, I can promise you, someone who does this with a character has very little respect for the character whatsoever and is just throwing their own spin onto it. Um, I don't know why we have this cover instead of one like this. You could have, DC could have easily went to the fans, done a contest by the fans, and they would have gotten infinitely better works than what they currently have. This would have been one of them. I promise you this, in my opinion, this should be the cover of Wonder Woman 1984. This is the cover that would sell. And in my opinion, this is what I would challenge DC to do. I would challenge DC to make two variant covers. You can still print this anonymous, this obnoxious trash, but get War Dance Comics and offer to put their cover up there. I want to see this cover compete with this one on the comic book stands. I am quite certain this one will sell more. I would almost be willing to bet money this one would sell more. And I'd like to see the sales between Rooster Teeth's and War Dance. W Rooster Teeth versus War Dance covers on the stand. I've said this before, that all Comicsgate would have to do to crush every single comic book pro is get on the stands and start competing. That's why comic pros do not want independent creators putting out works onto the newsstands. That's why they will sit there and they will fight to maintain that space in the comic stands, inside of comic shops, so that no one else can be up there but the big two and the approved comic book pro companies. If this were up there and this was done by an anonymous artist, this would this is sell. This will sell. This will get people interested. Now whether the story's any good, I don't know. But if you're wanting to hook people in, this is the superior cover in my opinion. Anyway folks Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And hit that bell for notification. I put out videos as often as I can. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.